Wednesday, the 8th of January. Welcome to Business Morning. I am Busin. I'm Afaya. Let's uh, get you what's the developing story. Iran fires a barrage of uh, missiles at U.S. bases inside Iraq, saying the attack is, was proportionate to the killing of uh, Qasem Soleimani last Friday by a U.S. drone in Baghdad. Meantime, the stock market has whipsawed around the world. Saudi Aramco shares was down 10% on the Saudi stock exchange. Asian bosses also went down. Gold races to $1,600 an ounce, and crude oil jumped to $72 a barrel before retracing below $70 a barrel. Meantime, U.S. President Donald Trump tweeted that all is well on Iran's reprisal attacks, but is due to make a formal speech on the Iran reprisal attacks later today in Washington. Meantime, investors are scrambling around the world to reassess markets' position on Iran's reprisal missiles attack and what will be the likely U.S. response. Meantime, the United Arab Emirates Energy Minister uh, Sohil al Mazuri says major oil producers within OPEC are not expecting any disruptions to crude supply and no current plans for an emergency meeting of the oil producing nations. That's where we are at the moment. Let's get a very quick take on the global markets this morning from our London uh, office where Julian Olayinka, my colleague, is standing by uh, to bring us up to speed on this developing story, raising the curtain on the show this morning. Juliana, good morning. Good morning, Boson. Good morning. Thank you so much. Where are we at the moment as far as the market is concerned on this overnight reprisal missile attacks fired from Iran into U.S. bases inside Iraq? Well, as to be expected, the global markets have been ratified. You shared some of the top line information, but um, inevitably the FTSE 100 is opened in the red. Yesterday, um, when we spoke at lunchtime, it seemed as if uh, oil prices has just about leveled out. That's not the case this morning. Brent crude oil is up about 1% on a barrel. Also as well, all the major uh, US markets closed lower. The Nasdaq, the S&P 500, all really struggling. Even in Asia, Asia, they're just ahead of um, the UK and all of their markets are um, open. Well, they're at the moment, they're trading by about 1%. Uh, percent. Uh, obviously, the main story that everybody is focusing on is the 22 uh, missile attacks on the two US bases. As you said, uh, President Donald Trump tweeted that all is well so far, although there have been some suggestions um, that there are some casualties. That's coming from Iranian state media. They said there could be up to 80 casualties. And the Israelis earlier said that there could be. If that's the case, and we hear from Donald Trump, then we're really going to be expecting um, more volatility um, at intraday. Um, but also as well, very important uh, for our viewers to note that there was, of course, that second major story, which is the Boeing 707 Ukrainian passenger jet, um, uh, which was allegedly, um, uh, it crashed. The Iranians are saying that it was um, due to technical failure. But just before I came on air, the Ukrainian president has actually opened criminal proceedings. The timing's not great. Um, once these missiles uh, were struck, that's when uh, the plane uh, fell down. Three Brits were on board, um, 176 people all dead. And we're likely to find out just exactly who was on board. But lots going on, lots to try and get our heads around, um, but not just what's going on with Tehran and Washington. This Ukrainian Boeing jet is also going to ratify um, uh, the airlines industry. Yes, uh, a lot of a rattling uh, around the world as we speak. And uh, uh, investors and, and folks are reassessing their positions around currencies, uh, metals, gold, whatever. Uh, uh, treasury yields is also uh, part of being what's been whipsawed today. Thank you so much, Juliana, for raising the court and bringing us up to speed where we are right now as far as the developing story around the Middle East is concerned. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, stick around to around the end of the program to bring us up to speed. Quite a number of corporate news are coming out of the uh, UK from December marketplace. A few of these we want to uh, touch base with you later on the program. Thank you so much, Juliana Layenka from London. Juliana, welcome back to the program. Let's uh, close this show together. First, on the market side, anything you read in very quickly, then we'll take a look at one or two corporate news. 
Uh, well, of course, the developing story of what's going on between Tehran and Washington has left uh, markets in volatility. I'm just slightly further away from my desktop, Bosun, um, than I am to the studio. But of course, when I speak to either you or Chumaze at intraday, I'll give you the latest updates on that. Uh, just before I came into the studio, I saw that uh, uh, the pound was trading pretty much flat against the dollar, up about 0.07%. So a pound is worth uh, $1.00. Uh, 31 at the moment. But of course, once we hear from US President Donald Trump, all will change. We don't think there are any casualties at the moment, uh, but we're still waiting for a solid, a solid update uh, from uh, the Pentagon. Uh, yes, you, you, you're correct. The, uh, a pound trading 131.46 on the greenback. That's one of the currencies uh, that's in the green territory, about two tenths of a percent positive on, on the dollar, as you speak. Thank you. Uh, of course, the FTSE uh, is still 100, is still in the negative territory. But as part of the stories for the FTSE, uh, not just the uh, US Iran tension, has to do with some of the listed companies on the London Stock Exchange. Aston Martin, we talked about this yesterday about this luxury brand. And now it's issuing a profit warning. Do you have any idea what the figure will look like for this uh, uh, car company? Well, Aston Martin really struggling at early trading. Their shares were down 4.7%. And as you said, that's because this is the second time in six months that the struggling, I'm afraid, luxury uh, car maker has issued a profit warning to its shareholders. Uh, they are predicting that their year-to-year -year, uh, sales will be down about 47% than it was last year. And so they're expecting profits before tax to be between 103 and £104 million. Pounds. At the same period, Last year, they were reporting 243 million. So that's a massive um, decrease. Of course, they are uh, citing really difficult trading conditions. We've seen that with car manufacturing in the UK as a whole. And of course, it is really going to hit those luxury uh, car makers. Pretty sad news for Aston Martin because, of course, for luxury car fans and uh, film fans, the Aston Martin is directly linked to James Bond 007. It hasn't been listed um, in the equities market for that long. It was uh, listed in the FTSE 250 uh, for, since 2018. And since that time, their shares have actually plunged 75%. So not great news for Aston Martin, and it's not looking likely to pick up anytime soon. Uh, no, not a very good story if you're, if you're tied to James Bond, one of the world's greatest movie series. You uh, should be doing really. But again, perhaps before, just make sure you don't become a dinosaur. Uh, with the latest movies coming through, Frozen 2, whatever it is, and all of that, the galactical movies and all of that, uh, Star Wars and all of that. Th those are the latest movies these days. Maybe folks are forgetting about the, um, uh, the escapades of, of, uh, of uh, 007, James Bond. Well, so what about S Sainsbury? Uh, this is company uh, reporting Christmas numbers. Is it all good and rosy for Sainsbury? Not great uh, for J.S. Sainsbury's. J.S. Sainsbury's is a large, giant grocer slash retailer here in the UK. Um, it's one of the big four. And also it's an umbrella company looking after Argos as well. Argos is a kind of, you know, you can get anything in that store from white goods down to toys. Now, they've just um, announced their three quarters. They're 12 weeks um, to January the 4th. And um, it shows that during December, which, of course, for any retailer is the busiest period of the year, their um, sales were down 0.7%, which isn't great, of course, because if you take into account Black Friday and Boxing Day sales, which is huge here in the UK, you would expect them to do more. But their CEO is saying that it's a mixed bag of information, um, that they've done much better than they reported this time last year, because last year they were down one 1.1%. So there has been a growth of 0.4%. Uh, and also as well, they said online has done absolutely well. So uh, make sure I get these uh, statistics right. Their grocery sales online were up 0.4%. Um, online grocery trade as a whole was up 7.3% and clothing was up 4.4%. So they say their massive disappointment really came from the Argos wing. And that's with uh, gaming and toys. A lot of parents obviously being smart, not buying uh, their kids extra toys. Um, this Christmas, but they did say they saw 
recalled some record-breaking customers. So on Black Friday, they said on Argos, they were having 12 orders per second. Just think of that, per second, which is absolutely massive uh, for the UK. And they said they also saw about 32 million customers come through their stores during the last week of Christmas. So as statistics are in economics, take the good and the bad. But uh, their shares at the I moment know. are down 1.52%. I, I know. I know. Okay. Uh, quite a nice one. You need to get back to that desktop because I'm sure you have quite a lot to chew over with Jimmy Zilbi where I go at 1.30 in the afternoon. I'm going to be watching from the newsroom just uh, uh, across the door here. Thank you so much, Juliana. Have a great day and the rest of the team for being part of the program opening and closing it.